Hello everyone, Guysmith here, and today we are back and all I want to do is survive. Yeah, you'll have noticed something in the distance off to the side. But first of all, I want to show you my sad attempts at making Christmas. Well, actually that is a sad attempt at making Christmas, but still. Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod adds this tiny little Christmas tree. Yeah, it's, it's not the greatest. I will say, it's very, very much not the greatest. But over here, we can see another very, very sad attempt at it through a nice little path that I designed, and yeah, it... it didn't... it didn't turn out so nice. Yeah, there's a reason why this isn't the Christmas episode for my channel. <laughs> oh god. This is... this is a sad, sad failed attempt at a Christmas tree. Very, very sad and failed attempt. But first off, before anything else, I want to show you guys this area. I have really just basically redone my entire backyard. I have moved the farm, seeing as I now have the farms in the, um, the factory, the factory area. I keep forgetting. Oh, hello, I see them on. Basically, I have just decked this whole area out with nature so that I can try and have a nice high altar power. Leading on to that, I now have a crystal ball, which actually, I want to read my fortune. We'll stumble and fall. Basically, with a crystal ball, it uses a small amount of altar power to tell either your own or another player's fortune. As well, if they are within a viewing radius, you can spy on them. Uh, seeing as I'm not a multiplayer, that doesn't work. Technically, it does kind of work, but since I'm on single player, it would have to be animals and whatnot. I almost forgot about something else I want to show you guys. Off camera, I have done a little bit of progress on Applied Energistics, and I now have an ME controller. See? Cool, right? It looks... it's... It is very, very... what's the word? Anyway, um, now I can uh, have more devices on my network and whatnot. As well, I have worked a tiny bit more on Thumbcraft, and the stuff that is in that chest is for this episode. So basically, I have gotten a silver wood rod. I'm gonna put on my goggles for revealing. In order to make a silver wood rod, you get a silver wood log in one of every type of shard, including the balance shard. Then one of all the base aspects, and Precantatio. Uh, nine of them, anyway. I want to, first of all, infuse something to show you guys how, it, how cool it is to infuse something. Um, so basically, you get all these jars of aspects, Essentia, um, just stored up, and um, actually, don't I need more Potentia in order to be able to charge the Thaumium cap? In order to charge it up, I need 12 Potentia. I only have four. Oh no, I need more Potentia. Um, what has Potentia? Okay, well this means I just get to show you guys this. I'll actually really quick show you guys this. Forewarning though, if you guys ever do witchery in your own world of Minecraft, I definitely recommend with the Witch's Cauldron using the Ritual Glyphs right away. Put a small white circle ritual around it, and definitely make the blue book that comes along with the mod. Uh, I didn't grab it. Yeah, I didn't, of course. I'm not doing wizardry stuff. And make sure that you always fill the cauldron completely full. I actually screwed that up in a previous attempt at a recording, and really, the drop of luck did not turn out. Um, I just got a brew of colored water. Yeah, that's basically what happens when you fail a brew. Or, or if you fail the brew, uh, it can also explode. And that hurt my dog, so that's why they're moved slightly further away. Because this is actually more like the blast radius. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, needless to say, a few of them were, like, right here, right next to the blast radius. They were, like, half health. <laughs> well, not half health. More like five points off, but still. That's, that's a lot of health. But anyway, here's the alchemical furnace for Thomcraft. So basically, the alchemical furnace allows you to break down a sen uh, something into its aspects. Coal, for example, turns into Ignis and Potentia. And then these glass files allow you to just take this stuff out in uh, eights. Oh, and this also is a result of failed brewing. Ugh, I can't even begin to explain how annoyed I was until um, I went off camera and finally figured it out. Honestly, I don't even know what was going through my head that day. So I can put Ignis in there and... Uh, Potentia, Potentia, um, and then more Ignis there. Cool. Alright, so basically that's how it works. It breaks down, this breaks down the aspects. Um, I was using coal, for instance. You basically can burn coal in this slot. It works a lot like a regular furnace. Um, this is like a little countdown sort of thing. 
uh, this is the countdown for how long it takes to actually smelt something, and then this is how um, much, a uh, how many aspects like Essentia is basically filling this bit. This bit can hold quite a bit, and then these individual Alembics can hold only one aspect each. The jars of Essentia can basically just be plopped down in the world anywhere. It's recommended that you put it somewhere useful, of course. Oh, there's something else that I kind of want to make. A mixed crystal cl cluster, yeah. So, um, the crystal cluster, here we go. Just make three of those. Um, actually, I probably should make a fourth. Um, and otherwise it's not really balanced. Um, okay. So, I can put one here. Uh, and it just breaks apart. I can't put it on the dark glass? Really? Oh, that sucks. That sucks a lot. Does that mean that I need to make eight, basically? Yeah, it does. It has to be balanced, of course. These help with balancing this whole system out. And believe me, if you don't balance, it doesn't it doesn't go well. Uh, it really doesn't. So this is the charged one. In, in order to charge the inert one, uh... Here we go. You do a moderate instability uh, arcane infusion with three Salus Mundus and an inert thaumium cap with these aspects, which you can generally just put in a ward of jar. Um, so yeah, you do that, and then one, two, and three. That's about as balanced as it's going to get. And then do. Yeah. Let's just watch it because it's so pretty when it does this. Oh, I got zapped. I'm not supposed to be super, super close to this. Um. Oh, hey, there we go. That that went off without a hitch, actually, because of these, I think. Great, compared to how um, the la when I was making the silver wood rod. Oh, God, that, that didn't go over so well. Yeah, uh, my silverwood rod. That that actually gave me like flux flow for two minutes. Um. So yeah. Wait, can I? What? In order to, in order to make this, I need more V's than this stores. Okay. I think I need to make the thaumaturge's robes, <laughs> more of the thaumaturge armor stuff. Guess I'll make the. The much are just leggings? I need more enchanted fabric, though. Uh, so I need more wool and string. And I'll go grab that out of my Emmy system. I think I have some. Uh, wool. I have a good amount of wool. I have an amount of string. That's good. Then I'm probably gonna need to refill the aspects on my... <laughs> on my freaking wand again. And that. Ugh. Oh, that means that I don't have my magnetization leggings anymore. Okay, I guess I can just put that there. I think I want to enchant this as well, because these have a tendency to break. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize that this wasn't enchanted yet. I'm gonna go enchant these. I'm surprised they haven't been enchanted yet. Uh, unbreak... Oh, I just realized. Just take all the levels. Take all the levels. Uh, unbreaking... Let's just do protection. Why not? I am now a Shining Thaumaturge. And then I can do the same with the leggings, uh, protection all the way, enchant, and unbreaking all the way, enchant. Cool. I need to really just recharge this wand now. This might take a little while. A few moments later. So down here, let's eat chicken. So that, and charge Thaumium Cap. That. Oh, thank goodness. Thaumium bossed Silverwood Wand. I can only just, only just have made it. Oh my. <laughs> I really have depleted that wand, haven't I? All right, well, now's the time to charge this wand up. Brilliant. Oh boy. Uh, let's find some nodes that I haven't really messed with. You know what I also just thought of? The Twilight Forest also has plenty of nodes that I can um, get from. As well, it tends to help when it's darker for you to be able to see the nodes, like, um, from the surface of the water. Question, why is this aura node barely glowing? Oh, it's just a normal... oh, weird. 
This wand is gonna take a while to fill up, isn't it? Ocean nodes OP. Uh, aura nodes, aura nodes. Any others that I can see in the distance? The thing with aura nodes is they're kind of hard to spot. Jeez, this is taking a while. You know what? I'm gonna finish filling this wand up later because I have other things to do this episode. So, TP at P negative 23, 63, 173. Again, I have other stuff to do this episode. So, let's just stir the wand away for now. So there's some stuff that I want to make from Mechanism that is going to be very, very crucial in our near future in order to be able to do better ores. As I mentioned some time ago, quintuple ore processing is possible with the Mechanism. However, at this point, I'm still only at uh, triple ore processing, which means that there's three ingots per ore. You can get it up to four using this thing called a sal... Uh, it used to be called a salination plant, but now it's called a solar evaporation plant. In order to be able to make the brine which you use, you need to make a thing that is an upgrade, a filter upgrade. This allows you to separate heavy water from regular water using an electric pump. Now, you use this heavy water with a solar evaporation plant in order to make brine, and you use the brine to get uh, chlorine, with a electrolytic separator, and then a uh, chemical infuser, which is made, uh, infuser, which is made as such, just a dynamic tank to gas tanks, and, um, you use the chemical infuser to do hydrogen and chlorine to make hydrogen chloride, which you use with a thing called the chemical injection chamber, which is crafted as such with a purification chamber. There's gonna be some setting up to do in the near future. I eat right now. Also, I need to go grab my my jetpack. I'm gonna leave the Magoo goggles and all my Thumbcraft armor there right now. <laughs> ay yeah, yeah. Uh, my actual usual armor is just completely overpowered. <laughs> I mean, it overfills the durability bar. You can't see how much armor it actually gives me. Most of the time, I don't even actually take damage. It's like that old um, power suit armor. I think it was actually just modular power suits. <laughs> Uh, solar evaporation blocks are literally just a dynamic tank surrounded by copper, and the dynamic tank is just basically four steel makes four dynamic tanks with the bucket, which you get back for the crafting recipe. So it's basically one steel to one dynamic tank, and then you use eight copper for one dynamic tank. I'm gonna need to make more of this. Fly home really fast and hopefully make enough to be able to get, like, a decent height on this thing. Oh. I'm out of steel now. Oh dear. <laughs> How much copper do I even have? Uh, I have plenty of copper for this. I have plenty of copper, however I don't have enough steel. Um, I think I'm gonna be right back once I have finished building the, the solar evaporation plant. This is gonna take a little while, so yeah. One eternity later. Okay, we are back, and it's been a little while, and you can probably tell that there has been a bit that has changed. First of all, I deleted a lot of footage because it was mostly just me, like, fussing around <laughs> trying to um, figure out the solar evaporation plant, which, in the end, wasn't that hard, actually. I just needed to look it up and move a single block, i.e. the controller to the top. Also, I have since found out that because of the biome uh, being a mountain biome, you know, where there's snow on the ground normally, notice how all the torches are here, but where there aren't torches, there's snow. Yeah, there's a multiplier of 0.1, <laughs> so that means that this is really going to be slow. <laughs> in heating up. Despite the fact that it has 2.5 thousand Kelvin as its max temperature, it's never gonna get there during one single day. I have actually attempted a few times to get it above a thousand Kelvin. Um, the way in which I had to do that was actually using time set cheats. Yeah, it's not all that easy when you're in a mountain biome. I'm probably gonna need to make a second one of these. I repeat, a second solar evaporation plant in order to be able to actually do this as efficiently as it could. The brine is actually going so slowly that um, sometimes that it just sort of like dries up in the fluid ducts. It actually doesn't seem to be doing that right now. Oh, it's probably because it's heating up right now. Is this like filling up with brine at all? No, it's just barely going fast enough to be able to keep up with that. So basically, this is 
the sort of setup that I have. Um, water is coming in to this one, and this one just sort of uh, is actually idling. It should be dump access uh, for that. Um, and then uh, I have it set to high, so it'll turn on now. Um, currently, the chlorine and hydrogen are being fused into hydrogen chloride, which is actually going into this gas tank right now. Um, because I don't want it to just sort of be stored in the pipes for, you know, forever. So, um, I'll actually set it to high now so that I can build up more chlorine. Obviously, there's a ton of hydrogen just stored up, but chlorine... Chlorine is a little bit more difficult because of the brine situation. But, um, anyway, underneath here, I have sort of set up the pressurized tubes, the advanced version, of course. Uh, so that now the chemical injection chamber can get the hydrogen chloride that it needs to be able to um, quadruple my ore output. And the purification chamber still needs its oxygen. Um, yeah, the machines just pile up. And believe me, there's one more for quintuple. I don't know if I'm gonna have the sanity to be able to do that. But we'll probably end up doing that anyway because of why not. Oh my god. <laughs> oh dear me. Um, I'm probably going to need to, like, redo a lot of the wiring, well, not wiring, the pipes and all this, because this is, like, super, super condensed to the point at which it's, I had to move everything. <laughs> Basically, well, not everything, a good amount of stuff. I had to move them a good amount of stuff in order to fit in the chemical injection chamber. Uh, in order to fit in the last one, I'm definitely going to be needing to move, like, the aqueous accumulator and all the rest of the stuff, so... Yeah. Let me see if I can go and get some ore from home. Uh, I don't know if I actually have any ore right now at home. I might have to go to my digital miner and just get some from there <laughs> in order to be able to actually show you guys how this works. Ore. Uh, so I have some copper ore. That's, that's not very much. I don't really have much ore at all. Wow, I'm actually surprised. Aluminium and... Um, why not just grab all this stuff? You know, when I originally thought of making this place, I thought, you know what? It'll be good because it'll be underground and um, it'll be easily hidden. And I can like just make it sort of um, like mostly, well, like I said, mostly hidden and just sort of like, whoa, what's the surprise when you come down here? It's like really breaching the surface because of the solar evaporation plant and it backfired on me because of the solar evaporation plant having like a negative multiplier because it's in a cold biome as opposed to a hot one. Um, you're supposed to put it in like a desert, for example. Deserts are probably the best place to have these. And then, um, there's no, there's no hydrogen chloride. Uh, oh dearie me. Uh, make the hydrogen chloride. It's being filled up, not emptied. Slight technical difficulties with that, but oh well. Uh, let's just see if we can get all this into here. Oh, I need to put it into there as well. Uh, so the mechanism ores are gonna go through. Um, it can't do aluminum. Or this. Really? Oh, that sucks. I can do it with the enrichment chamber, but nothing else. And the enrichment chamber is just double. Aw. Can I use this with the enrichment chamber? No, no, I can't. Oh, that's sad. I guess this is just how X Nihilo works. I'm not going to be able to completely automate this with X Nihilo then. Well, I guess that's that system done. Good God. So I guess that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did. Um, subscribe if you want to see more episodes of All I Want to Survive and otherwise Minecraft series and some non-Minecraft. I'm about to finish Soma. That actually, I do have a finale planned for the new year, so hopefully I can get, stick to that. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys will like the ending because I know I did. I have finished recording, yes, and I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything. So. Ha ha. Alright, but anyway, that's all. So, thank you so much for watching one last time, and this is Guy Smith, signing off. Until next time, take care. I'll see you guys. Bye!